Okay then my friends, so at the minute we have this empty user class, so we're creating objects using this class, but those objects are pretty meaningless at the minute because they have no properties and they have no methods associated to them. So in programming, objects should have properties that describe the object and also methods which are just functions associated with that object which allow that object to do things. So in our case, when we're talking about a user, maybe two of the properties that a user should have would be a username and an email property. So we're gonna define those properties inside this class right now. Now, properties of a class are just basically variables that live inside the class. So I'm gonna create both of those now. First of all, I'll say username, and then I'm gonna set that equal to Ryu. And then underneath that, I'm also gonna say email, and I'm gonna set that equal to Ryu at the net ninja uk. So we're actually giving these variables values at the minute, but later on we'll see a different way to do this. This is just for learning now. But anyway, we define these two variables inside this user class. Now what I'm also gonna do is put the public keyword in front of both of these. And what this means is that these properties will be accessible on each instance of a user later on when we need it. And we'll see that shortly. So anyway, now we have this user class with these two properties, these two public properties inside it, a username and an email. And the value of this property is Ryu, and this property is Ryu at the netninja.co.uk. So now when we create these new user objects using these things right here, and we're storing those instances inside these variables, both of these instances of a user object will have access to these different properties. Now we can access those pretty easily. And the way we do that is by saying the instance variable. So whatever we store the instance in, so user one or user two, so user one to begin with, then we do a dash and angle bracket like this. So it makes a little arrow. And then we say what property we want to access. So for example, username. Now notice we don't put the dollar sign here. The dollar sign doesn't go there. The dollar sign goes at the start over here for the instance. Then it's just a little arrow like that and the property name without the dollar sign. So that would access us this value on this instance. Does that make sense? So from the start, we make a new object based on this class and that object will now have these two properties. We access that property username on that object using this little arrow like so. So what I'm gonna do is echo this out to the screen so we can see it. And I'm also gonna concatenate a BR tag so that if we do another echo after this, it's gonna go on the next line. So let me save that and preview. And we can see over here, we get Ryu, which is this property value. Does that make sense? Because we're just accessing that property on this user object. So I'm actually just gonna copy this right here and I'm gonna paste it down below because now I also want to grab the email like so. So let me save that and come over here and refresh. And now we can see this value as well. So it's grabbed the username property and the email property as well. Awesome. So I said the objects in real life could have properties and also methods or things they can do. And the same is true for objects in programming. They can have methods or functions and that's things that they can do. So right now these are just properties of the user. They don't actually do anything. They just hold a bit of data for us. But we can also have methods inside a class as well, which describes what objects created using that class can do. So for example, our user objects might have a method called add friend, and that allows a user to add a new friend. So again, we'd say public to make this public, then this will be a function, and then we give this function a name, we'll call it add friend, and then we just define this function as normal. So in here, we could just say return, and then a string which is gonna be added a new friend, like so. Now, if I try to access this down here, we do it exactly the same way as this over here. So I'm gonna say now echo, and this time it's gonna be user one, little arrow, and then the name of the function, which is add friend, and then we invoke that function using parentheses. So if I now tack on at the end a BR tag as well, and then save this, we should see whatever is returned to us right here, because this right here is gonna return a value. Okay, and that returned value is then gonna get echoed to the screen. So let me save this and preview. And we can see now added a new friend. 
Now then, inside this method right here, add friend, we might want to return something that says whatever the username is or whatever the email is, added a new friend. So to do that, we need to be able to access these properties inside this method. And we can do that. We can do it by using the this keyword. So inside the class itself, this right here with a dollar sign in front of it refers to this instance of the class. So say for example, we're calling this method on this variable right here, this instance of the object, then this would refer to this instance, okay? And if we want the value of one of these things, the username or email from that instance, we know to say arrow and then the property name, right? So if this is the same as saying whatever the instance is that we're calling it on, then we can just add an arrow after it to access the value. So we can say this and then username, for example, and that is going to get us whatever the username value is for this instance. And by this instance, I mean whatever instance we call the method on. If we call it on user one, then it's going to be user one email or user one username. If we call it on user two, then it would refer to whatever the value is for user two. Now, at the minute, that would be the same because they're Ryu and Ryu at the Net Ninja for both of these two instances, but later they might be different. So anyway, we could now output this inside the string by cutting it from there and deleting that. And I'm just going to paste it inside here. We can do this in PHP. If we use double quotes like this, we can output variables inside the string. So now we're returning this dynamic property and then added a new friend. So if I save this now and preview again, then it should be Ryu added a new friend. And we could do the same with the email. So I could say email instead and save that and refresh. And now it's Ryu at the netninja.co.uk added a new friend. So there's a simple example of how to add properties and methods to a class. Now, sometimes in PHP, you might not create the class yourself. You might be getting someone else's code and you might want to find out what methods and what properties are available on a certain class instance or a certain class. And we can find that out using a couple of different functions in PHP. So the first one is get underscore class vars and then we pass in a string of whatever that class is called, in this case, user, and that would return to us all of the variables available to us or all of the properties inside that class. So I could echo this out. Let me just do that right here. In fact, I'm going to say print underscore R because this is going to be an array and print R is going to give us a better output for that array. So I'm going to do that first of all. And then also I'm going to say print underscore R because we're going to do something else. And this time it's going to be get underscore class underscore methods. And that's going to do a very similar thing, but this time gets the methods available to us on a specific class. Again, we pass in a string of that class name. So let me save that and refresh over here. And now we can see these two different arrays right here. This first one shows us the different properties available to us and also the values of those properties. And this array right here gives us the different methods available to us on that instance as well. Now, at the minute, we're just echoing out the information associated with this instance right here, user one. That's what we echo out right here. So what if we try to do the same thing with user two? Well, let's try this. I'm going to first of all comment out this stuff right here. Then I'm going to grab all of this and I'm going to paste it down here. And I'm going to change this to user two. And also this one, I'm going to alt click all of these so I can delete all of them at once and change this to user two. So now because we created a user inside user two as well, we should see user two username, email, and also whatever's returned from add friend on user two as well. Now, if you think about it, these should all be identical. This should all be the same as this, because when we create a new user like this, whether it's one or two, then we set up the class those properties are all being hard coded with the same values. So really it should be the same. And if I save this and preview by refreshing, we can see now we get the same data output twice. And that's a bit boring because every time we create a new user, we don't want it to be the same information. Otherwise, what would be the point in having separate users? So we'd like them to be unique. Now, one way around this is to change 
the values after we've created the class instance. So say for example, I wanted to change user2, I could grab user2 like this, I could access whichever property I wanted to change, like the username for example, and then set it equal to a different value. So I could set it equal to Yoshi for example, and then the same would be true for the email. So let me go to the email by saying user2 and then grab the email property and set that equal to Yoshi at the net ninja .co.uk. Now I wouldn't need to update the function itself because we don't hard code any specific data except for this little sentence inside the function. This grabs whatever the property value is on that instance and now we've updated the property values on this instance right here. So when we grab the email from this particular instance down here, user2, it should now grab Yoshi at the Net Ninja. So let me save this and try it now. Hopefully this should all have been updated. And now we can see the updated data. So when we create the users, by default, they're getting this data up here as the property values. But after we've created user2, we're then updating the properties by using the same arrow syntax here to grab the property names and setting them equal to a new value. So we can do that at the minute because these things are all public. So we're exposing this right here, these two properties, so that we can access them like this and also change them like this. So that's absolutely fine to do. But that's a bit of extra work and I wouldn't really want to do that every time I create a new instance of a user. So if I create user 3, user 4, user 5, I then wouldn't want to override the variable values of each of those users separately. Instead, it'd be nice to do something like pass the data in here. So pass in a username like Yoshi and pass in as a second argument, the email address. So Yoshi at the netninja.co.uk or something like that. And we can do something like this. We can implement this behavior using what's known as a constructor method. And we're gonna take a look at exactly how to do that in the next video.